Hey guys, it's Exorcizzle. I'm not gonna have a really long intro this time. We're just we're just gonna start. So after Sawatsu messed up his mask with lunar eclipse and used it in the homecoming, the vessel bloomed. When someone blooms, they basically die, but they're still alive in a way. They pretty much enter a coma that they will literally never wake up from, and yet they can still get up and walk around. And they also still have that basic instinct to get as close to the moon as possible because they're trying to reset. They want to return to Area Zero. They want to pass on to the other side. In terms of lunar melody, when someone blooms, their own personal melody becomes so distorted from what it once was that it ends up breaking, or I'm assuming becoming something entirely different from what it once was. This is a little bit off topic, but in the final boss fight with Sakuya, a really distorted bagpipe version of the Tsukimori song is playing, and I wonder if this is actually the culmination of all the lunar melodies that have broken all across the island. If you pay close attention to it, you can actually hear many different sound layers, as you can with most music, but if it is all the souls yelling at once, that's pretty fucking neat, in my opinion. Anyway, in summary, when a person blooms, they are technically still alive, but permanently unconscious. Their lunar melody is so messed up that it's not even their melody anymore, so the people basically lose their souls because they can't remember who they are at all. From my understanding, the souls detach from the blooming bodies and become ghosts, and the bodies those souls once belonged to just wander around blooming and separating more souls. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, let me know if it doesn't and I will try again. After the maiden that wore Soatsu's mask bloomed, she wandered around the island causing more and more people to bloom, but thankfully, not everybody. I really want to know how they stopped her though, because the game never really says how to stop a blooming person. It's just like, eh, put a mask on it and play the piano? Maybe that's it though, maybe she instinctively made her way up to the Tsukiyomi lighthouse to be closer to the moon, just like Sakuya does at the end of the game, and one of the Tsukimori shrine maidens played the piano to make her feel better, and ta-da, everyone who bloomed stopped and passed on to the other side. Or Area Zero. Anyway, Sawatsu was neither seen nor heard again, ever, and as I said in my last video, the islanders burned everything relating to him that they could find. The homecoming was banned and was pretty taboo until two generations later when one of Sawatsu's descendants, Sogen, made a tourist version of it called the Kagura. The Kagura is almost the exact same thing as the homecoming. The preparations are the exact same and the way it's done is the exact same. I'm almost 100% sure that what makes them different is the mask of the lunar eclipse. The Kagura doesn't have one probably because Soetsu's mask was extremely taboo even after the Kagura made the homecoming a little less scary to think about. The kimono the vessel wears could also be a key difference, but it's never confirmed in-game so it could also just be a personal choice. As you could probably imagine, not sending the souls off to the other side and clearing out the lunar noise from all the dead people for over a hundred years kinda sent the island into a really bad downward spiral. Getsuyu Syndrome, the disease that comes from not being able to hear your own lunar melody when there are too many dead souls on the island, became so common that Rogetsu Hall, a huge, huge building, was built on top of an old inn just to house all the new patients. Rogetsu Hall and Hybara Hospital were both owned by the Hybara family, who I guess you could say were a very troubled bunch. Prior to the first day without suffering, they were a group of priests that helped out with various rituals, but after Soetsu screwed up, they decided to open up the hospital and then Rogetsu Hall to start trying to cure Getsuyu Syndrome with medicine rather than rituals. Sadly, this medicine was not always the most pleasant medicine, or even the most effective. Shigeto Haibara, the head of the family and his staff, would literally drill into various parts of the brains of patients and often kill them in the process, all in the name of finding a cure they would never actually find. We don't know anything about Shigeto's ancestors, unfortunately, but we do know that his wife contracted Getsuyu Syndrome and could not deal with the guilt that came from her violent outburst towards her loved ones, so she threw herself off the roof of Haibara Hospital. We don't know when this happened, though. Shigeto had two children with his wife, Sakuya and Yo. We don't really know a lot about how Sakuya was before contracting Getsuyu, but based on how she acted during cutscenes where she wasn't flipping the heck out and how Yo describes her, she was a very calm and soothing person to be around. She had a healing spirit. And she was also a medium, just like her mom, which unfortunately made her a thousand times more susceptible to Getsuyu Syndrome and possibly made her disease progress a lot faster than most people. In fact, probably it did. Something that really, really bothers me about Sakuya is that we don't get the year she was born in, and yet we get her brother and their creepy incest baby's birth year. Also, apparently Yo impregnated Sakuya, his older sister, when he was only 13 years old. Yo was born in 1945, and Ayaka was born in 1958. What the heck? Ayaka isn't super important to this part of the story, but I will talk about her soon, I promise. Anyway, when Yo got a little bit older, he decided to follow in his dad's footsteps and became a doctor. He went to the mainland to open up his own clinic and experiment on people, presumably with the hopes of finding a cure for Getsuyu Syndrome, but maybe not. He seems like he's probably a pretty messed up guy. He might have just wanted to torture some people. I, I'm not sure. He ended up killing some people and unfortunately ended up running back to Rogetsu Island where he and his father started working on bringing back the real homecoming, not the touristy Kagura, so they could hopefully cure Sakuya's Getsuyu Syndrome. 
The Tsukimori song was another part of the homecoming that got almost completely erased over time, so Yo's first task was to find the musical sheets containing it. He found some sheets and tried to adapt them into a contemporary style, which was probably a very, very bad idea. Whatever song he created, it was not the Tsukimori song, and when he would play it for patients for music therapy, it would make them even worse. It actually confused them even more because it added to the noise preventing them from hearing their own lunar melody. It literally took away people's souls rather than giving them back like the Tsukimori song was supposed to do. First mistake. Yo's second task was to pick the five accompanists for the ritual. It's unknown exactly how he did this, but at least three of the five girls he chose appear to come from spiritual families. Misaki is a descendant of Dr. Azo, the inventor of the camera obscura, and Ruka and Madoka are part of the Tsukimori family, although it's unknown exactly how Ruka and Madoka are related. We still don't know why he chose Marie and Tomoe. Ruka, Madoka, and Misaki, and probably Marie and Tomoe too, all had get Suyu syndrome at this point, so their lunar melodies were pretty weak. If you watched my last video, you know that accompanists are actually supposed to have an even stronger lunar melody than most people, so y'all really screwed the pooch here too. Second mistake. The Haibaras believed that having Sakuya become a vessel was the only way to cure her Getsuyu syndrome, even though they could have picked literally anybody else and it would have helped her just as much. We only really find one kind of weird note in game talking about the selection process for a vessel, but it appears the main requirement is that the woman can meditate and return to Area Zero while still alive and then come back from it like nothing even happened. The woman can't do that and not all of her soul returns, she cannot become a vessel, and if she does, she will probably bloom. Heck, she might even bloom even if she doesn't become a vessel. Not everybody can go to Area Zero and come back and be okay. Sakuya was definitely not healthy enough to become a vessel. She had her own isolation room because her Getsuyu syndrome was so bad that it had become contagious, a stage known as resonating. Her distorted lunar melody got so loud that it started distorting other people's lunar melodies too, causing them confusion and slight amnesia when they were around her. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's not a good sign of a quality vessel. Third mistake. As you probably remember from the previous video or from playing this game yourself, the vessel and her accompanist were supposed to meditate together with their masks in the Hall of the Unconscious Mind for 100 days. Either to not draw suspicion of the six women going into the mysterious ritual room every day, or because of time constraints, Sakuya and her accompanist did not meditate at all. Fourth and final mistake. Probably. Let me know if you can think of anything else. I really don't know how they thought all of this would be okay, but they were really, really desperate. The chance of performing a homecoming only came once a decade, and Getsuyu Syndrome was only getting worse and worse by the year. Once again, it had been around 125 years since they had cleared the lunar noise. They probably weren't even sure if there would be an island in another 10 years if they didn't perform the ritual. The entire island stalled for too long and they acted too late. Either Shigeto or Yo enlisted Soya Yomotsuki, a descendant of Soetsu, to make the mask of the lunar eclipse for the homecoming, and contrary to what I thought pretty much up until just now, Soya did not actually mess things up. It wasn't his mask that did it, it was everything else. My reasoning for this is that the mask does work at the end of the game, so long as it's combined with a girl with a strong lunar melody playing the actual Tsukimori song, not Yo's terrifying reconstruction. The homecoming is a machine, and without every gear turning perfectly, it will not work. On the night of the homecoming, the five accompanists secretly chosen to participate were kidnapped from the audience of the Kagura and brought down along with Sakuya to the underground lunar hall where the homecoming was performed. The accompanists were very uneasy prior to putting on their masks, but entered a somewhat peaceful, somewhat disturbing trance afterwards, in my opinion, providing even more proof that Soya made the mask right. They played their respective instruments, but whatever they played sure as heck was not the Tsukimori song, so the souls they were guiding into Sukuya probably got pretty confused and even more distorted and irritated than they were previously. Sukuya did manage to go to Area Zero, but her soul never came back. Her mask broke, she lost her connection to Earth, and she could no longer send the now even more pissed off spirits to the other side. Sukuya was kept alive in a coma of sorts in the Shrine of Morning, where they waited for her to hopefully wake up and be cured. The homecoming also somehow caused the vessel and her five accompanists participating in the Kagura directly above the homecoming to collapse and die instantly. The reasoning for this is that when watching the Kagura, the viewers and participants' souls would leave their bodies for a few minutes and then they would return sometime after the climax, hopefully cleansed. When the homecoming failed, it also shut off the link that allowed the people's souls to return to their bodies, so the fake vessel and her accompanists just straight up died instantly. Many people in the audience contracted Getsuyu Syndrome if they didn't have it already, and if they did have it already, it got worse. Some people lost so much of their soul from not being able to hear their lunar melody anymore that they decided to kill themselves. All of Sakuya's accompanists passed out and lost their memories, and after reading about how the moon reflection well has the power to restore memories over time, Shigeto and Oryo kept the girls there for two weeks until Choshiro Kirishima, a detective from the mainland looking for Yo, found them. 
The girls were returned to their parents who made the very, very smart decision to get them the heck away from the island. God bless. As I said previously, Getsuya Syndrome got a lot worse and there were more suicides, but nothing too eventful happened over the next two years. It was kind of like the calm before the storm. There were a few bad signs that Sakuya was going to wake up soon, though. Number one. This beautiful painting Yuko Magaki made accompanied by a lovely poem. Here's an excerpt. Look at the woman's flower! The face that is overflowing with beautiful destruction! The face without a face! The flower of extinction! Come into existence! Arise! Arise! It's my best impression of a crazy painter. I'm sorry, it's not that good. Number two. Sakuya's nurse wrote that she kept having a dream that she was standing in front of the door leading to the morning shrine where Sakuya's comatose body was kept. She could hear Sakuya singing very softly and then the door would creak open a little bit and then swing open, at which point she couldn't help looking at Sakuya even though she knew she shouldn't. This is sadly exactly what happened to the nurse on the two-year anniversary of the failed homecoming. The nurse was quite possibly one of the first people Sakuya saw, the first one being the morning shrine guard. Sakuya made her way all throughout the island, causing literally everybody to bloom, although we don't know how long it took. There were no survivors. She moves pretty slowly when she's chasing the player down in-game, and in cutscenes she seems to be pretty slow, but people just have to look at her to bloom, and she's pretty attention-getting, what with the super loud staticky lunar noise that follows her everywhere she goes. I'd say it took a week tops for everybody to bloom. I think the reason nobody had the ability to stop Sakuya was because everything surrounding the homecoming was so censored after the first day without suffering that no one really knew how to stop a blooming person, only how to prevent it. Like I said earlier, I believe a blooming vessel will instinctively make their way up to the Tsukuyomi Peninsula Lighthouse to be closer to the moon where a Tsukimori Shrine Maiden can play the Tsukimori song for the vessel to hopefully calm them down and stop their blooming so the vessel can finally send the souls off to the other side and clear the lunar noise surrounding the island so everybody living can get their sanity back. In 1972, when the second day without suffering happened, there were hardly any Tsukimori Shrine Maidens on the island. In fact, if Ruka and Madoka's mothers were really the only Tsukimoris left and they were already gone, then there was nobody who even knew the actual Tsukimori song, so it's not like somebody could just go up to the lighthouse, avoid looking at Tsukuya, and play the song for her. Not until eight years later, at least, when Ruka, a Tsukimori descendant, shows up with a properly reconstructed Tsukimori song in the masculine eclipse. She tries to exercise Sakuya's spirit with the camera, but either because the camera is too weak, because in my opinion it's the first camera obscura prototype, or because Sakuya is somehow the easiest to fight boss with the most resistance to being exercised, it still doesn't really work without the mask in the song. Sakuya disappears for a little bit, kinda asking you very, very politely to play the song, but if you mess it up, she will come back and will play very aggressive Queen of the Lighthouse with you one more time. Play the song correctly though, and it still isn't enough. Sakuya continues blooming until Choshiro shows up, grabs the mask from Ruka, and puts it on Sakuya, finally allowing the doorway to the other side to open up. The mask was fine all along, it just needed the right preparations for it to do its job. All of the spirits of the islanders, as well the lunar noise surrounding the island, clears up, presumably making it inhabitable again, but I don't think anyone would really want to live here, and if they did, they'd probably be screwed, because once again, the only remaining Tsukimori Shrine Maiden left. Unless Ruka left detailed notes on how to fix things in case the lunar noise does start becoming a problem again, after a few hundred years, maybe even less, Getsuyu Syndrome will probably be just as bad as it was before everyone bloomed and died, and nobody would have any idea what to do. Everyone would be screwed again. And that's where I'm going to leave things today. If there is anything that I missed in this video and you'd like me to go over it in the next part of these Fatal Frame 4 explanation videos, then let me know. I plan on there being one more part where I go over everything I didn't quite get to in these past two parts, such as interesting... Hmm such as interesting plot elements in the various ghosts, so subscribe if you do not want to miss it. Thank you for watching, have a great night, and remember... You will be